communication designer. He's working as a filmmaker and communication designer. He has experience of more than 15 years in designing animation and filmmaking. And today, Sir is going to take a session on animation resources, concept, purpose, types, and development. So we welcome you, sir. And uh, definitely all of you are going to enjoy this session. So over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's 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 wonderful to have you all here. And uh, today we'll be talking about animation. And animation is a very fulfilling and a very uh, interesting medium. It is full of possibilities. And uh, it's very, uh, it's it seems very formidable, but it's quite easy. Okay. And we are going to have an enjoyable session and hopefully you all will also uh, enjoy. Uh, just one second. Can you all see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So before we start, I would like to request you all that, uh, you know, it will be good if we can have it as a as a two-way session where everyone also everyone else also participates. You are welcome to participate by raising your hands using the chat option. And uh, free, please be free to add to our collective knowledge and we can, you know, arrive at the answers together. Right? We'll be talking about, <clears throat> we'll be talking about uh, a lot of things. We'll be talking about uh, why animation is required, what is animation, different types of animations, and how animation can be used in education specifically. Then after that, we'll be talking about, uh, we'll be taking one uh, example of an animation film, and uh, we'll be just seeing how uh, it was designed and what were the steps that were taken to, to arrive at that animation. Okay, now before we start, let us first start with a small, with a with a small uh, animation uh, collection of animation films. It's a, it's a small two minute video, so we just uh, please have a look at it very carefully because then we'll be discussing, we'll be using this video, uh, and we'll be arriving, uh, we'll be using it to understand the, the different types of animations in the next uh, slides. Okay, here it goes. Sir, the volume is not clear. Means the voiceover and the tune is not very much clear. Any better now? Well, your voice is clear, but videos um, audio is not very clear.
Okay. So uh, we just went through this, these animations. There were different types of animations. The first one that we saw, this was primarily a text-based animation. There was text. It was used to, uh, you know, convey things, and the text was designed in different ways. Then this one, this one was an example of a 2D animation, right? We'll be arriving at what is 2D. Uh, this is 2D with 3D background. So there are some elements which are in three dimension and some of them are in 2D, okay? Then uh, this is another example of a 2D animation. And as we moved further, this was also a 2D animation, but it also had some light effects. There was some, uh, some stuff, uh, you know, specifically, uh, there were certain things which are called, so things like these, these are called FX. And now this one, in this animation, the sparrow that we see, this is actually animated. This is actually a 3D animation. It's a very photorealistic animation. And so this is an example. This is this can this is to tell us what is, what is uh, the what are the things which are actually possible. And then, uh, for example, in another in this one also. Yeah. So this this squirrel, this is also animated. So one can get this kind of, uh, you know, things are also possible when one uh, is doing animation. Okay. Uh, now, see, uh, this, is a, this is a frame specifically used for this to show that this is animation because one can see the squirrel, the basic structure of the squirrel and one can see uh, things that have been added to it to make it look real. Okay. Uh, this one is from a film. It was, uh, it's called Ok Janu. This remake of a South Indian film, Ok Kanmani. You might all be aware of this. So Ok Janu, in Ok Janu, there was a, uh, there was a gaming sequence. This is that gaming sequence. And this is, uh, this is also very photorealistic. And this is actually, uh, can be called hyper realistic also because everything has been exaggerated. The lights, the sounds, and because it's part of the game, so everybody is jumping, and uh, the physics in this world is slightly different. The gravity is different, the light is, lighting is different, all of these things are there. So these are the different types of animations. And before we move ahead, let's just discuss why do we need animation at all? Why do you think animation is required? What any 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 suggestions, any any uh, any inputs? Why do you think animation is important in uh, in in education or to communicate what? Uh, any ideas? Because for concretization of abstract content, contents, that's a very beautiful answer. That's actually very very close to real. Uh, it's amusing learning, it's an effective communication, attraction, it makes more understanding, it creates interest, attracts, it helps in imagination. Yes, yes, they are all, all of them, all of your answers are spot on. It's such a nice to have enlightened audiences. So it's really good. So, you know, when, when I started thinking about why animation was required and what are the advantages of animation, uh, I realized one is, of course, it lightens the mood and it lightens the mood because there is a convention because, you know, uh, we've been seeing comics. So it just one just connects with that. Then it attracts attention easily because when you see things which are which are not easily seen, when you see elephants fly, you know, it just one just becomes very one automatically becomes uh, attracted towards it and wants to know more why. And, you know, so it's a good way of getting attention of the students. Then this one, this is a very uh, unique thing. It depicts difficult to shoot topics, you know. There are times when uh, it is not possible to depict, you know, for example, if you are to talk about surgical uh, procedures, if there is a particular surgical procedure, 
which is quite rare and or it requires an actual patient so you know their animation can actually help then uh, it depicts fantasy based situations you know so fantasy based is like uh, picasso has famously said na ki uh, that whatever you imagine is real so anything that you imagine it exists somewhere it exists in our mind so it exists so to depict that to depict those fantasy based situations because they are higher reality there are things which are you know depicted even in things which may uh, take help of uh, fantasy like characters but there are truths in them also sometimes so there it helps and then there are infographics infographics somebody has as, as somebody has said it is about abstract abstract concepts so there are concepts which are not physical which are not real they are in the realm of ideas for example you're talking about different types of management you know so it's just easy to make four boxes and talk about them and animate them so somebody has spoken about virtual reality virtual reality is a technical subject it's a technical term also it means uh, something slightly different so yes it <laughs> animation is a virtual reality and virtual reality in animation is also there there are times when we want to depict something in a 360 degree screen and the viewer is inside that screen that is called virtual reality and there are uh, different ways of pro projecting it for example in a planetarium there is a curved ceiling so what you are seeing is one example of virtual reality but there are better so there are devices which also capture the motion of the uh, user for example oculus is one device where you know you have these two screens on like a goggles they come in front of your uh, eyes and there is another device which is capturing the movement of your sky of your of your head so as your head moves it adjusts it adjusts the pictures uh, which are which are seen in the uh, screen so one gets Uh, uh illusion of sitting in a different space with you know action happening all around so that is called virtual reality you might be knowing all of these things here so just bear with me for those who know these things now let us try and define what animation is any any inputs how do we what what is animation because to understand how animation is how animation to, is to be done we need to first define what is animation where we are going we need to first figure out any any inputs what do you think is animation it is moving pictures that's a very beautiful answer but just think and tell me is there what exactly is moving when you are seeing an animation through animation we can see imaginary world yes sir that's correct answer to the last question now we are working on what do you understand by animation animation is frame is moving it is movement in sequence yes and but just think just think uh what exactly is moving animation helps and helps to fulfill their imaginary word adding any motion to pictures will depict situations promptly yes that is one way of looking at it persistence of vision good so basically what happens is animation if we see what is animation you might say it is what cartoons somebody is saying imagination coming through picturizing the content it's about graphics it's about moving pictures but what exactly is animation so animation is a method in which figures are manipulated to appear as moving images they are manipulated they are manipulated because uh and they are manipulated to appear as moving images so you know like i was asking what exactly is moving so when you are seeing something in uh when you are seeing something on television and there's a there's a there's an animation going on tell me we all know that television ultimately is just pixels and you are sitting in front of the television you are not moving your television is not moving your pixels are not moving 
So what is moving? There is nothing moving really. So that is why I am saying it is they are manipulated to appear as moving images. They are only appearing to move. There is nothing really moving. So animation is based on as uh, somebody uh, just said it is based on the Rasina, Rasira ma'am from uh, Lakshadeep just said it is based on persistence of vision. Persistence of vision as our physics uh, teachers would already know and a lot of our science teachers would be knowing this. Persistence of vision is you see when we whenever we watch something whenever we, we see something we use our eyes and this is what our eyes look like okay. Now uh, there is a there is a lens here and there is a screen behind it and and then there is a nerve which goes to the brain. So this lens whenever we see something uh, an image of that is formed in on the screen and then that screen is processed and our brain does rest of the fill in the filling in the blanks and tries to make sense of it. So uh, thing is that the image that is formed this is important that image is neither permanent nor temporary it stays on that screen the retina it stays for some time and then a new image comes either our head moves or something moves something so there's a new image all the time coming continuously so this stays for a very tiny amount of time any any uh, uh, who knows how much time does it stay for? Uh, can it, somebody tell? So when this image is, you know, there and it and it moves. Before this image moves, before this image moves, if we are to, uh, somebody said one by twenty-four of second. That is close to answer, but it's actually slightly different. It's more like 1 by 15, 1 by 15 or something. Now, what happens is, see, what we do in, uh, what we do in animation is, we, on a screen, we show an image, okay? We show an image and then we remove that image and we start, we portray another image just next to it. The new image and the old image, they are, 99% they are same, almost everything is same, just some slight modification has been made. It could be anything, it could be their, uh, you know, the position of a, of a thing has moved, or the size has moved, or uh, the color has moved, something, something has changed. And we keep repeating it. So basically what happens is our mind, because our brain has been trained to, uh, you know, like we said, uh, like we discussed in persistence of vision, our brain is uh, you know, uh, trained to um, to process these moving images all the time. It uses the same processing, and it basically uh, understands this as that uh, that the figure has moved, or that that change has actually happened. That is why I was saying there's nothing really moving. It's just everything is illusion. It's Maya, as they say. So, <laughs> so another one. So when we keep repeating this, when we keep repeating this or over and over and over and over again. The, this becomes animation and this this is the basic principle behind all animations all television programming anything that is moving even our phone they have a refreshing rate or uh, even the zoom the image that you are seeing you know the pixels are there in front of you only those the colors of the pixels are are changing continuously and it's seeming that i'm sitting in your room so this is animation in simplest words Okay, now there was there's a one beautiful device which actually predates television. It actually came before television, and it uh, that is how animation started. So uh, please repeat. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that there there was one there's one device there's one device which is uh, which actually predates television. There is nothing electronic about that device, but yet it creates the experience of animation and it is based on the same principle of persistence of vision. 
Any guesses what that device is? So while you guess and you share your answers, let's just watch this small video. Okay? Watch carefully. So this is a flip book as uh, Lakshmi Madam has just said. So flip book, you know, flip book is it's a technique that actually came before uh, we had television. And so all that one used to do was they would draw an image and on the next page they would draw another image which would be almost same as the first image but something would be slightly moving. It could be color, it could be the position of a thing. It could be anything and they keep repeating this and with this they are able to convey uh, you know abstract concepts fantasy like concepts see that how how this how this cloud comes so with every frame there's just a slight 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 change it is important that 99 percent of it remains the same the shape of the cloud doesn't change only its position changes if we if the shape were to also change if you have too many changes then that illusion won't happen so this is the basic principle of uh, making animations and uh, we'll be using this to make animations also now let us just see what are the different types of animations before we can start in understanding how to make animations let us just see what are the different types of animations and is the process of making all of them same or different so the first one is a 2D animation. Now 2D animation, it means two dimensional animation. The second one is 3D animation, three dimensional animation. And then there are certain new media things which are, which are still uh, in the process of evolution. They've just come and the grammar of how to use them is still getting developed. Augmented reality and virtual reality. So uh, let us just start with 2D animation. So when we say D, D for dimension, hmm, our mathematics students would also would already be knowing what a dimension is. Dimension is degree of movement that a point or that any anything in the animation is allowed. How many ways in which a point can move? Supposing there is a point and it was not you, are, you don't allow it to move anywhere that is a, that is a zero dimensional space zero dimensional world if a point is allowed to move only on a on a line for example a train a train going from Vishakhapatnam to Chennai it will only be going either uh, towards Chennai or towards Vishakhapatnam it cannot go towards Bangalore suddenly you know it is just it will be and stay on that line only so that line that is one dimensional animation one dimensional world two dimensional is like a ant sitting on a table it can move from left to right it can move forward or backward just as we walk on a on a playground and 3d is of course when it's like birds when we also have the option of going up and down so as we all know uh, dimensions are portrayed in mathematics with x y z so uh, y is usually the vertical one z is for the depth and x is from left to right so you know we need to we need this to basically convey uniquely every point now 2d animation is an animation which involves moving flat characters moving on a 
2D canvas. When the characters are also flat and the canvas is also flat, we can call it as a 2D animation. What I mean is, for example, we just saw in the initial film that we saw, we saw uh, some scenes, for example, this scene. Now, it has, it looks like these people are, sit, are standing uh, next to each other, but they are all flat. There is nothing, if you were to ask me, what does this man look from the other side? What is his other side of the face look, looks like? There is no other side. We don't know what this animal looks like from the other side, okay? Whether it is same color or it is a patch, there is, there is just no other side. So these are these are all flat, flat characters and the world is also flat. The background is also flat. So when we have something like this, we need to use the illusions that our eye is very used to, to convey depth. For example, when there is something far away, it is portrayed as small. Now this, this one... Uh, uh, you know, this cart is smaller than the cart in the front. If you were to make it in the same size, it might look that they are on the same plane, you know. So, we use techniques like these. For example, these men in the uh, in the background, they are slightly smaller than the man in the, in the front. Another example, we have this scene. We just saw this film also. Uh, so, you know, again, the examples of uh, the, the techniques of basic compositing and drawing are used to make it look like a 3D, but they are all they are all 2D characters. And uh, also shadows have been added to again make it look real, make it look how they are interacting with uh, you know uh, the environment. Uh, there is this bird that you might see. You might you know, if you were to look at it critically, it has no role in the story. But adding things like these, they do add to the story and they are called secondary animations as we'll be uh, talking about them. So secondary animations, you know, one might want to just move the grass a little bit or, you know, things which are not directly contributing to the main narrative, but they do add depth to the story. Now, coming to the 3D animation. Now, 3D animation is like we said, when it is something is moving in three dimensions. Now here, there was in the in the 2D animation, we saw there was an illusion of the, th of the third, third dimension. But we also said that everything is everything that is happening is illusion. So how is this illusion different from that illusion? So how, how do we say that 3D characters moving in 3D space? So thing is that the computer, it the, the difference is in the way the computer stores this information. Whether the computer is using XY plane to store the different characters or it is also using a Z plane, a, a Z axis. So that is the difference between a 3D space and a 2D space. So when computer stores things in such a way that there is a depth also, then that becomes a 3D animation. And uh, for example, let's just watch a small 30 second clip and then we'll talk about it here. Yeah? Yeah. So, you see what is happening here is, you see this, this small uh, boy, if you see carefully, although again, the screen is flat, the screen on which you are watching it is flat. But this, the way it is stored in the computer, computer also knows what is behind, what the behind of his face looks like, what the side of his face looks like. His face is stored as a sphere, as a three-dimensional, like a, like a ball. And uh, then we also see these shadings. We see this shading on the on the face. Why this is happening is because there is a light being thrown on the face. Now, where is light that co light coming from? The light is coming from. Uh, also, again, it is all happening in the computer only. Computer has basically created a small world where all most laws of the physics they are applicable. 
there is there is a light then the way light is interacting with different things that is also stored inside it that is also programmed in the computer so you might see that the way the light interacts with the skin it may not be same way in which it interacts with the cloth or with the metal so those kind of things are also stored okay now uh, another type of animation is infographic or character based animation these are very different then this is a, this is this is a different uh, way of uh, dividing it we will be coming back to it later now let us see so basically infographic infographic ones are are the abstract ones you know the ones that we saw we, that we just saw the last two ones they were all character based they all had characters what if there is not a there, there is no character at all so there we have infographic based animations so for example you know something like something like this no here there is you know one might say there are characters but basically it's about concepts it's about you know how we convey how we convey abstract things and one one uh, one easy tool for this is of course powerpoint you all have used powerpoint most of you would have used it and there are so many other 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 tools also now which are available and you know, so these are all these are all abstract uh, animations now let's just talk about how do we make an animation what is the pipeline now animation you see animation is a animation is a specialized subject it is a specialized subject means there are uh, there is a there is a there is a chain there is a pipeline which is at work now what happens is there are there are three uh, broad phases towards making an animation just as it is with making any radio or any 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 audio visual program there is pre production pre production is where we decide what we are doing we arrive at then production is when we kind of cover most of the distance and post production is when we polish it and we make it presentable and we create the final experience that the user is going to have pre production is uh, you know we start with a concept note we decide what we have to make who we are making it for what are the things that we need to uh, that we need to you know take in account what are what is the audience like what is the age of the audience you know things like uh, whether they know certain concepts or not do we uh, would they be how 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 difficult or how easy we have to make it for them whether they will be able to grasp it or not and then if we have to go for a fiction based video then we need to then arrive at a script so when we are making a script we need to make it as real as possible we also have to make it that we also have to make sure that the script is as uh, the characters in the script are such that they are able to identify with them because that's that brief you know uh, connection that they make it should be strong enough so that the message stays with them and then that also arrives at this to the designing the characters characters should be designed in a way that they are they are close to you know what they uh, what the what we want to portray and that also uh, takes from how uh, how much we know about the audience what we want to convey and things like those so once we have the script and then when we add when we add camera movements to it it becomes the screenplay and uh, there is a complete is a complete grammar of camera movements whether camera is zooming in zooming out moving left to right rotating it's called pan there are different transitions so all of these those things different types of shots when they are all of those things are also added on the paper along with the script it becomes a screenplay and then that arises that takes us to storyboard storyboard is when we have something like a comic something like a comic it just it is important uh, so that everybody in the team is on the same page you know literally also and figuratively also 
they are on the page of the storyboard that they all are able to imagine they are they are all imagining the same thing so that once we have the storyboard we are our post production is complete then we start making those things we start with the scene we start with the background we make those backgrounds we start with animating the characters each character you know uh, the character that was designed here they are different parts of their bodies they are made you know the legs the arms they are all kind of broken and then we add movement to them that is character animation we add secondary animations like we saw uh, those birds leaves in the background you know things like those even within a character also when i'm talking to you my hand is also moving there are voluntary actions there are involuntary actions it requires some bit of observation also so those correct those animations are also added it just makes it more realistic there are background animations which for example the bird and you know things which are not directly related and then compositing is when all of these things have been done and they are all coming together they all come together then that become, and we create we, we, there is a process called rendering where everything is recorded as one a single shot those shots are then added together in the next step which is editing those shots are all added uh, they are added one after the other editing you already have got a basic understanding of editing dialogues are recorded uh, there is some back and forth sometimes sometimes dialogues are recorded and then animation is done sometimes animation is done then the dialogues are recorded there are sound effects which are added there is music to be added and then everything is kind of seen a few times and when you are ready and when you are uh, satisfied that you have arrived at the final thing that you wanted to create then you export it as uh, as a final video that is post production all of these things they are sometimes you know in the actual industry all of these things lot of these things are done by different people not one person does everything because they are all specialized uh, disciplines it takes a lifetime to learn some of them uh, so you may not be able to you know uh, learn or master everything you don't need to all you need to do is to learn to be able to understand the the basics of everything so that you can convey when you are working with a team you can convey but the first part of course the concept note in the script that is where your job lies that is where you need to really uh, focus and you need to arrive at the script which is something which is really you know hard hitting and incisive for example uh, there was a film that we saw in the in the beginning uh, ashwa kumar you know there there we we thought we we were, we were talking about a character uh, which was designed and this was basically designed for uh, this was designed for a uh, you know for communities we are which are working with horses horses mules and donkeys so we wanted to convey to them certain good practices for horses this was for an organization working with the horses so the first step was how to design the character what should the character look like there were a lot of different uh, you know styles were made a lot of different examples were taken from uh, you know from the internet from pictures from magazines what would what would inspire them whether it, they should the guy should have shoes whether he should have what kind of dress he should be wearing so you know we 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 keep going back to the community we keep going back to the people we are talking to what do they look like what they are more likely to follow or identify with and when we have different different types of these characters we shortlist them we take elements from each of them join them and you know then we arrive at one character which we think they might be able to follow they might be able to like now next is we make a script so when we are making a script you see what happens if i just show you one example of a script also You see, this is a script. This one is in Hindi. It can be in any language. Uh, 
Now, thing is, what is important to learn is, I'll just read out, uh, I hope it won't be very difficult. Uh, I'll just read out just a bit of it. A gaon me, a gaon ke paas, a pashu mela laga hai, jahan chaaro aur janwar bande hoi hai. Tamam log a ja rahe hai, kahi loudspeaker se prachar chal raha hai, chaaro aur janwaro ki awaze a rahe hai, wahi mele ke kone me do log baithe baat kar rahe hai. So basically what it is saying is that there is a there is a there is an animal fair in a in a village there are uh, animals which are everywhere all over all around there are animals a lot of people are coming and going there are loudspeakers which are being used to uh, publicize certain things and a lot of animals are coming and going and in a in one corner in one corner of that fair there are two people sitting and talking to each other the two people who are talking is one is Hassan. He is saying, "Kya soch mein pada hai Hira? Yahan to ek se badkar ek hi ghode hain. Dekh le koi apni pasand ka." And Hira is saying, "Yahi to pareshani hai Hassan bhai. Ghode to bahut hain, lekin mujhe achhe ghode ki pehchan nahi hai." And then there is a third character which comes. He is he is slightly funny. He is called Hoshia Chacha. He says, "Achhe ghode ki pehchan. Ab Chacha se bhetar hi koi bata sakta hai. Kyu sahi kaana Hassan bhai?" So basically, thing is that. Now these two are uh, Hassan and Hira. They are basically trying to find, trying to figure out how to buy a horse. And Hoshiar Chacha, he is a slightly negative character. We don't want the audience to uh, follow him, so he has been given a slightly comic, comedy, comedy feel, comedy kind of personality. And he is all the time trying to, uh, you know, say that yes, I am the man who can teach you things. And very soon people realize that he is actually not to be followed. Now, what is also important to see in the script is that there are certain portions which are highlighted. What is happening is that these yellow portions they are situations. It is important to it is important to at least put down in writing what is the situation that you want to portray. Make it as detailed as possible. So that when the team which is working on the animation, whether you are working on your own or there is a team working, they are all on the right, on the on the on the same on the same page, you know this page, <laughs> and then there are dialogues of course. So uh, you uh, one just writes a script like this, and then and then what happens is that that script is then converted into a storyboard. Now, what does a storyboard look like? Storyboard is something like comic, where things written there, they are, they are portrayed. For example, the first line that we read, कि एक गांव के पास एक मेला लगा है, there is a fair going on in a village. Now, you know, you might have uh, uh, read about, you might have studied different types of shots. So these are, this one is an aerial shot. This is an aerial shot of the fair. Not too much detail. Storyboard doesn't need to be detailed, but it is required. It is important to be clear and precise. And then there are camera movements to be added. So this one, this block arrow means that the camera is moving from left to right. Then there are uh, when we see two people sitting here. Now again. Uh, the line said that in one corner there are two people sitting and talking. So when we, you know, for the first shot we were talking, we were looking at it from a lot of distance. Then we come slightly closer to one side of it. Okay. And as we start talking, as they start talking, in the next shot we can come even closer. We not only come closer to them, we also decide the angle which is better for them. You know, whosoever is talking, we can probably uh, face him. So normally, when two people would be talking, they would be you know facing each other. But here, they need to face the camera also. So they have been positioned in such a way that one of them is slightly at an angle, so that the field is open for the camera to have a look at them, and the camera keeps favoring one of them in alternate shots. Now, this is the third character which comes. He has been designed in a way that it looks that he looks funny, that you don't want to follow him. So there's a there's a dichotomy. 
you know, there's a contradiction between what he looks like and what he says he is. So that, so those things, those are the kind of things that really would help when you are designing a character. When they, when they, they are uh, whispering to each other, we can go even closer and things like those. And then of course, there's a time when the, the hero comes, Ashokuma. So he's the guy who would probably be, you know, just talking about uh, what is the right way of going about it. Okay. Now, when we start, when we have this storyboard ready, this looks like a com like a comic book. Then we go about the actual, and we we can have different iterations, different uh, versions of the storyboard. We normally, it is okay to have six, seven versions. Once we have everything ready, and you can still be making changes. Believe me, even after ten versions also there are times we are making changes once we have all of this thing is ready then we move into the th into the second phase where the production phase where the actual animation starts so there this is what the uh, you know the first shot looks like and then we uh, record the dialogues so initially the record the recordings are uh, very there are scratch recordings. So scratch recordings is can be recorded. Somebody can be recording on the phone without too much, uh, you know, worrying about getting it right the first time. It is just to get the timing so that the animation can match it. You see. Yes. Now here, uh, this is a scratch recording. This is just to get the timing right, so that when we are animating, we, we get almost almost right, as close to how much time it will take. Once we are done with that, then we add uh, kind of this editing that happens. And then, you know, then we add music and sound effects and we add uh, the same thing is recorded with artists, with the people who are professionally uh, trained, and then what it looks like is slightly even, even better. So uh, you might have noticed, one is uh, there are of course background animations you would have noticed. There are birds and things like those uh, that we spoke about, secondary animations. And the second thing you might have noticed was the music. Uh, you know each of those characters, it is important that uh, when they come, people take them as what we intend uh, them to be. So well, you know this character has been given a slightly funny background music and so on and of course there are sound effects when we started there are there was a sound effect so so there was this uh, this cock there was bang of the cock so that is basically setting the mood that there's a and also you know fade in from so it just sets that there is a there is a morning there are birds and everything so all of those things they come together to create the experience like you said Okay, and then finally, of course, it is mastered and everything is, it is exported. Now, like I said, it is important to uh, to work on the target audience. It is important to work on the concept and work on the script. We, I had mentioned very briefly uh, about different types of shots. You would have noticed it, but I think it is very, very briefly, I'll just tell you. Uh, they, these are all different types of shots. There's most of the action is happening in the MS. MS is medium shot. Most of the times when somebody is saying 60%, 50% it will be medium shot. 
if somebody is saying something important, it is medium close shot. This is even more important. This you can go even further closer. These two are usually not used. Extreme long shot and long shot. These are used only for setting the scene. Only in the beginning of the scene mostly. Most of the action is happening in the medium shot and medium close up. Then also, uh, there are different types of camera movements. You know, when you're panning from left to right, there are, uh, you know, you're, you're moving, which is also called tracking, tracking out left to right, tracking in to out, zooming in, uh, moving up and down. This pad up, pad down is not usually used very rarely when you're wanting to focus on something on somebody's person. Somebody is wearing a different kind of shoes that day or different kind of a belt or something. You might do that. Tilt up, tilt down. Similarly, it's not used too much. So, uh, yeah, this is another thing that is important is short angles. Most of the time, most of the action, we are, the camera should be placed on the eye level of who we are speaking to. So this is also used, you know, it can be uh, a lot of times when we are taking pictures in a birthday also, if they are everybody sitting, the person taking a picture is probably standing and taking picture. It doesn't look very good. The picture doesn't, you would notice it won't come out very well. It is always good to come to their level or rise or, you know, as far as possible, match the eye level. Because whenever we are looking at it, something from high up, it creates tension. When somebody, when you are looking at it from below, that also creates certain kind of tension. So these are the kind of shots that one has to use when, you know, uh, when you have to portray something, uh, some kind of imbalance, you know, Ram Gopal Verma type of movies. <laughs> so one might use this kind of angles. Okay. Now, uh, let's just talk of, talk about, uh, one one movie, one small film, and then let's see how uh, the storyboard of it was made and how it was then. So uh, let's just watch this. This is a small forty second film, and then we can just discuss it. Okay. So what we saw was, this is this was one film. Uh, it was about about prevention of child marriages, discouraging people for child marriages, and uh, here basically uh, this father comes home and he says he he starts talking to the mother about uh, marrying off his daughter. The daughter listens to him. And she comes and she basically uh, confronts him and says, why do you want to marry? But she says it in a way, you know, the way daughters are, she says it in a way that his father would understand, her father would understand. So she says, you know, you remember when this, when you made, uh, made this building? And he said, yes, 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 you had come back from vacations and you saw this was happening. So, and she says, you remember what happened that day? I asked you to, to take me to the uh, on the top of the building and you said the building is not fully made if we go there it might break so she says it's the same way it's the same way in my uh, in my life also if i'm not 
fully ready and you may leave me, it can create problems. So it's basically uh, daughter telling that to the uh, father. Now, how did we go about making this? So the kind of research that, that is required is something like this. So basically we, uh, we realized firstly, who are the people we are speaking to? What are the kind of people, uh, what, who, who are the kind of people who are, uh, you know, what are the kind of communities that are using, that, that, are, that are marrying off their uh, girls or, you know, kids early. So we realized that just about 16% of the girls in the age of 16, 16 to 19 are married and most of it is in the state of Bihar. And uh, most of, so this is important. So most of the families we realized they, are, they were doing it uh, knowing that this is a crime. They know already that this is a crime. So, and how do we know this? Because a lot of them are faking their ch ch child's age. They are, you know, on papers they are writing it is more. So this tells us that fear of law cannot be used as an effective tool. We cannot use fear of law. We have to use some other way. We need to. So that is how we thought, okay, why not use the girl talk about it. Again, uh, primary school enrollment is 99%. So the girl, we can have the girl as uh, already educated. She can be speaking to her, to, to, to her father. And then another thing was that we also noticed that uh, something that we all know that in India, at least education and intelligence, they are not directly related. A lot of people that we know of were not educated enough or in villages, but they are quite intelligent. So rather than, you know, we cannot just go and tell, him to tell them that, you know, you are being stupid. We just need to, we need to respect their intelligence and we need to build upon it. So we took uh, things like they already know, you know, the building is, they already know the building is weak, you know. So for example, there's just one more I would like to show you before I move it. Just one second. See, just watch this. This is another, another 30 second film on a similar topic, and then we'll just move away. Yeah, so did you see that? Uh, again, what we are basically doing is we are trying to build upon, we are trying to build upon their existing knowledge. Okay. Now, Was the voice not clear at all? It was like not audible at all from the film? Okay. Do you want to watch it again? Just one second.
See, see, I hope this is better now. Okay, uh, I hope this was better now. So again, the idea was that we were building on their existing existing knowledge, their existing wisdom. Okay, now those kind of uh, decisions are to be made. How and uh, uh, you know if we just start talking to them without really uh, understanding who we are speaking to then it is not effective. Moving further, this is again the storyboard. We have seen how storyboard is made. These are different shots. The storyboard, you know, how it was on uh, then joined. You already, uh, we saw one example of how music changes stuff, how uh, sound effects and music and dialogues there. So let us now briefly talk about the 3D animation pipeline and how it is slightly different. In 3D what is happening is the pre-production again is the same and remember uh, pre-production is where it seems there is nothing happening but most most of the you know, impactful work is really happening in pre-production. Pre, pre so, you know, I would request you not to take it lightly. Now, in production, what is happening in 3D animation is we start with creating those models. Everything is a 3D model, like we discussed in 3D animation. We create those models. Then we come to texturing. Texture is what the surface, you know, once we have created a sphere or created a box, what does the surface of it look like? Look like means how it interacts with the light. For example, you know, if, if you are talking about a phone screen, this will interact different way, in a different way with light. It might absorb a lot of light, yet it might reflect if it is of glass. So it is, there is a mathematics and there is a physics which is at play. So all those different things on about that physics, they are to be told to computer about each surface of each model, and then compute and then certain types of light sources are also added. Lighting design is itself it's a very very big uh, it's a profession in itself. Then there are aspects of design that also come into it because most of the times, for example, lighting is coming from the top, you know. The moment we change the direction of the light, the mood changes. We are used to seeing all our lights. Have you ever thought why uh, in a room light is always on the top, always on the ceiling? It is because, uh, you know, because of the sun. Because we, we've got, we are used to watching sun uh, on the top. And uh, again, we, when we have to create tension, we either create, we either change the color of the light or we change the direction of the light. You bring the light, you know, below in Dracula movies, you know, they used to have, uh, they used to illuminate him from the bottom and suddenly you will feel the same person only, you will feel, you will feel there is something wrong and, you know, so it, will, it is basically using all these tools to convey what you want because you don't have too much time when you are making a film. So it's just those 10 seconds, 5 seconds and you need to portray a certain mood. 
so uh, texturing rigging rigging and animation here when we are talking about animation this is although everything is animation everything that we are talking about today is animation but here it has a specific meaning animation here is the actual movement of the different models animation is where our 3d models they do acting you know they move they move their legs or feet or faces or everything uh, so before we move anything we need to understand that there are certain things which we cannot do for example if i was to move my hand i cannot just move it you know i have to move it from the elbow only i can't move it from the uh, middle of my forearm why because there is a bone inside now rigging is the process of telling the computer where all there are bones what all i am allowed to move what all i am not allowed to move telling that to the computer is called rigging so when we create a model then we create a rig of it rig is when we add bones to that model and once the modeling rigging texturing everything is done then we add movement to it that is animation animation is something like acting so the artists which are making animation they again have to be very observant most of the animators you will find they are very good dancers also why in real life they are very good dancers because they keep observing people that is the only thing you know they do so they are able to use their body and you know prabhu deva style they are able to create those those dances lighting again uh, lighting is about you have to be uh, you have to look at the architecture you have to look at the the kind of mood the kind of place that is you know even indoor so outdoor lighting one has to look at uh whether it is a cloudy day it's a sunny day whether it is a windy day if there is too much of uh you know sand moving so all of those things can also be used to convey different moods also so when you have it's a you know when your main character is uh in a problem he will you will uh, you know he would notice the nature's uh this thing cruelty also he will notice more so you know because of this psychological fact what they how they use it is when they create a character and they, when they want to change the mood suddenly you know that time uh, there will be uh, there will be lightning on in the sky or there will be too much wind in the you know so things like those when there is a very happy romantic scene happening it will be nice uh, sunny day or maybe rainy day or so on so forth so lighting and also inside the building also if like if you look at it very carefully lighting in a house would be different from lighting in a in a office or in a hospital or in an airport or even lighting uh, within the house it might be different you know different types of people would have different kind of lighting a poor man might have very different lighting from you know somebody who is very rich so all those things are have to be observed and they have to be portrayed and then again everything is put together and is rendered rendered is when once we have told the computer everything all of these things then computer plays them and records it together so when it records it together then that becomes uh, that is called rendering rendering normally takes lot of time so for every second so you would know that uh, most of the animations they work on 25 fps are come are in in india the television system also works on 25 fps fps is frames per second so for creating one second of animation you need 25 different pictures which are slightly different from each other just that ball that we saw so all of those things so for each so 25 frames of rendering is required to create one animation in one frame it can take up to 15 to 20 minutes just to render one frame so you can just imagine that is what makes animation uh, very expensive also when we are doing you know industry standard animation it can take up to 20 minutes 30 minutes to create just one frame so imagine 20 minutes you are creating one frame multiply that by 25 and you have just one second of animation 
and that is on, only if you have got your pre-production right and production right. If they are not right, then you have to do it again. So <laughs> you may just imagine the amount of uh, effort that is required and the amount of technology that is required. So once we have all those shots ready, then they are all again the post-production part for 3D animation pipeline is also same as 2D. We dialogue we record dialogues, edit. But only thing is that in 3D we have to be little more uh, little more clear about what we are doing because the stakes are high, the expenses are more. But again, uh, for you, 2D and 3D, uh, if you are creating a professional 2D or 3D animation, you will be working with a team. The team would be taking care of it. Your job is to get the brief right. Your job is to get the characters right, the dialogues right, and keep in mind your audience. Uh, if you are not working with a team, you are doing it yourself, then you would, in all probability, you would be using uh, open source tools, you know, uh, tools which are used for, you know, uh, not very industry standard tools. You'll, uh, during this course also, you'll be talking about, so we'll be showing you some, some of those tools also. In the next, very next session, you'll be talking, you'll be doing some, using those tools. So uh, your job is to get the pre-production right, right? And uh, finally, uh, if we may talk about infographics very, very, very briefly. So infographics is again, uh, for you know, when we are using infographics, it is important that you, uh, again, you need to get the brief right you need to decide what you have to portray. You need to get, uh, you know, you need to come up with that exact image, that exact piece of graphic that can convey that abstract idea correctly. Now, how do we do that? A very good way of using it is using resources on the internet. There are some free resources available. You know, there are resources like, um, there are resources like uh, FreePick. You might want to just note this down. Uh, FreePick, it's a free website. You can go to freepick.com. There you can download a lot of uh, images and they are free, free for, uh, you can, I think, download seven, eight of them for free every day. After that, you can you have to wait for one day. Pexels has got a lot of photographs. They are all open source. They are all, you know, it is actually what we say open source. Or, uh, it is actually under Creative Commons. It's, it's a it's a type of license where the creator is allowing you to use that resource, but only if you are giving credit. Legally speaking, only if you are giving credit to that creator. So you just need to, whatever you create, you, legally speaking, you need to just add a line uh, saying that this has been downloaded from, this picture has been downloaded from Pexels and so and so and so has you know, taken this photograph. That is all that they want. Pixabay, PNG tree. PNG tree, when we say now, what is a PNG? Uh, any, any inputs? Anybody knows what a PNG is? Now, what happens is, you know, how it's, it starts with how pictures are stored in the computer. So what happens is that, you know, normally when we take a picture, it is stored as a JPEG. You must, everyone would have, you know, noticed JPG or dot JPEG. So JPEG is a way of storing the picture. It, is, it stands for Joint Picture Expert Group. This is a convention, industry convention. Now, what basically happens is that every every pixel it is storing uh, it in jpeg there are only three types of colors which are required, which are allowed red green and blue and different percentages of them in certain types of pictures which are called png there is a fourth color also required, also allowed the fourth color is called alpha channel it is transparency now so when you download a png you get uh, the background is the background is 
most of the times it is not square it is transparent so okay thank you sir uh, mrs subramaniam has just uh, from uh, right bzm he has just told me that it is joint photographers experts group thank you so much sir for correcting me i had read it long time back it just came back to me so it's so nice to have you know audience like this so png basically what happens is that uh, it has transparency so when you are uh, when you are making something for an infographic it is good to download uh, download pngs and when you do that you uh, you know you are able to com combine them easily and png tree is a good website to get free pngs then there is one more concept you know which is good which is uh, which can be used which is between the difference between vector and raster thing is again it is about how computer uh, stores information it comes from that so basically when computer is storing information it is defining the color of every pixel then there has to be uh, when we uh, increase the size of that picture of that image a time will come when the picture will become so big that the natural curves of that picture will become unclear so that is this way of storing is called raster raster graphics so when we are using raster graphics the only problem is that if it's a raster image and we uh, zoom on to it if we increase the size at some point it will become you know jagged like this another way of storing information is as vectors what happens in, in vector is computer is not storing the address of every pixel and storing the color of every pixel all that it is doing is it is writing it in terms of an equation you see in like we have read in mathematics every equation can be uh, portrayed as a line or as a figure in graphics in a 2d space coordinate geometry so it's the same way how a line would go it is stored as an equation so when you that when you do that then you are just telling the computer to play that equation again so when we are zooming into it you know when we are zooming into it all that the computer is doing is it is just changing certain variables and recreating it again so the, the benefit of using vector graphics is that you can go on zooming onto it infinitely usually what happens is that uh, the raster files are jpegs and vector files are they have the extension ai ai stands for illustrator adobe illustrator it's a software or it is also eps is another extension so when you are downloading stuff for infographics it is best to download vectors it is best to download pngs and like i have said they are all available on uh, these websites there are a lot of other websites also uh, another thing is that there are some you know when you are combining these website uh, these uh, things together there are you need softwares uh there are a lot of free softwares because in this course we'll only be talking about open source and free softwares most of them so uh, open shot is a very interesting software you'll be learning open shot also very very soon uh there is davinci resolve now davinci used to be it used to be a paid software and it is industry standard software a lot of hollywood movies have also been edited on davinci the best part about it is that it is free you can download down davinci how they make money is that they also give some hardware with it that hardware is with uh, it's basically a particular kind of a keyboard a keyboard they make money by selling that keyboard so it is easy to use it with that keyboard but with a, with a normal keyboard also it is quite easy so uh, this is something i would encourage you to once you have learned open shot you have done some practice 
I would encourage you to download DaVinci, work on it. Tutorials are available online. There is Blender is again, it's a very interesting 3D software. You can use Blender and Adobe, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere is again, uh, it is an editing software, but it is paid. Premiere Rush, Adobe Premiere Rush, it's a smaller version of Adobe Premiere. This can also be downloaded from Adobe, Adobe's website. It is, uh, it used to be free for some time, but now it is slightly, you know, they have just a very little bit of fees. We all can maybe, once you've learned it, you can pay. They also have some packages for educational institutions also. You might want to explore that. They keep changing. You can explore, you can get a deal on that also. I would, uh, you know and then there is also one more it's a new software it's called open tunes open tunes open tunes used to be uh, again a paid software till very recently just about two three months back it became free this is also you can explore it it is uh, slightly complex but very effective and uh, you know some kids are also in spite of it being really complex some kids also, you know, school students are also using open tools to make basic animation. I'm sure we all can do it very easily. So uh, these are some softwares. Open Shot, you will be learning in the next session. So that will uh, give you some understanding. But, you know, the basic thing is, the basic thing to remember is that all these softwares, they will be getting outdated very soon as you move ahead. As you, uh, by the time you learn one, the second one, you know, would have come. What will stay with you is the basic, the basic principles, the the things that we, the, the, the background knowledge that we discussed, that will stay with you. So it is best to not to focus your knowledge on any particular software because software, you know, it will go very soon. Fonts are very small, okay. Is this any better now? Or, you know, you'll be getting the, you'll be getting the uh, uh, PPTs also anyway. Okay. So don't worry about that. I hope this is made it uh, easy. Somebody has just mentioned in the chat that the fonts are not uh, readable. So I've just increased the size. And also, uh, this one also I would like to share with you again you know you might want to just note these ones down also free pick access these are all online resources and uh, with that we are coming towards the end of this session if there are anything that you want me to repeat or anything you want to discuss or anything you want to correct which you have a difference of opinion Please uh, go ahead and then we can kind of conclude the session. Anything uh, you want me to uh, repeat or anything that we discussed is uh, not clear or anything? So I hope you enjoyed understanding uh, the basics of animation. And I hope you now have uh, a better, a better understanding of what an animation is. It is there's no ghost in the box. It's something very very easy. There is no rocket science in animation, and it is something that even PowerPoint we can make animations. Yes, in fact, PowerPoint you can make animations, and you, in fact, you know, so a lot of people they use PowerPoint without really understanding. It's a very very powerful software there's power in the name also <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, once you have basic understanding of animation and then you approach powerpoint it just becomes even more uh, useful and it becomes even more uh, powerful so uh, anything you would might like me to uh, take up in detail or anything that you think we can cover we still have a little bit of time Or uh, thank you.
thank you for the motivation amazing session somebody is saying thank you sir so uh, can we can we conclude the session then please explain how to use animation in powerpoint sir animation in powerpoint is quite easy actually it's very easy okay let's just i have not prepared for this but if you want i can let's just see okay let's just take an example now this is a powerpoint slide this is powerpoint in front of you and this is an image okay now here here what we have is there is one animation uh, there is one animation tab okay we go here we go here and we just go add animation it's as simple as that we add animation and what kind of animation you want to make there are a lot of examples for example uh, you want to emphasize so there are entrance animations there are emphasize animation there are exit animation so for example if you want to emphasize something okay you want to grow and shrink so see that is it if <laughs> you just created an, an animation now when we uh, see that is how simple it is so <laughs> so that is i also didn't know it was so simple so, <laughs> so here you know the the thing is that this one one is the sequence of animations now there is an animation pane it's called here so here we can add different types of different things of animation so and we can kind of reduce the size the reduce the uh, you see this in the in the right side corner reduce the duration when you reduce the duration the speed increases so i have just reduced it and let's see what happens so okay here it is working the other way so when you are reducing the reducing it it is actually becoming slower and also you can uh, you can uh, decide the trigger trigger can be on the click of a mouse or at the end of the previous animation and so on so you can use these together and you can use them to do a lot of things in powerpoint okay so can we convert ppt show as a video now so that is a very very uh, yes technically you can you know what you can do is you can so powerpoint doesn't allow that powerpoint wants to retain its interactivity but what we you can do is you can use a you can use a use a screen recorder there are screen recorder recorders available online you can use uh, for example there is one called uh, i'm just telling you it's called uh, it's called obs studio for example obs studio it says it is used for broadcasting also so with o obs studio also allows you to capture the screen as a video so you can just uh, create animations on the powerpoint play those animations and while you are playing you can use obs studio to record ppt can also be exported as a movie i i'm sure sir it can be done i am not uh, very i have not i've never done that but if you're saying it is I'm, i'm sure it must be possible now so things do change very fast and uh, so uh, with that may i uh, conclude the session and is there somebody from uh, is there somebody from the cid team okay so uh nizamuddin sir has just said that you can uh, you can just go to save as and create a video and you can decide how long the video can be it is as simple as that so yes things are possible and yeah you see nowadays lot of things are coming in lot of things 
Now AI is also becoming very, very, you might have noticed AI is also becoming very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Somebody is interesting and thank you, sir. Thank you for the interesting session on animation uh, resources. Uh, we have shared the attendance link. So please fill the attendance link. And uh, now we'll take a break for 15.